Well, we never did get round to putting these switches on this door, did we? Hey, leave it. Don't you dare. Do it later. Don't do it. Don't get distracted. Stop doing it. Don't do it. Get Carry on tidying up. Oh, okay, okay. Well, here's an old pillar drill that I've got knocking about. I've had it some time. It's been sitting on the floor for ages and ages. What make is it? <laughs> Walls Turner. Hmm. Hold on, let's have a let's clean that up a bit. Let's have a closer look at this pillar drill. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Machine tool for wood and metal. Walker Turner Company. Oh see that plain Plainfield NJUSA. Oh, I never. <laughs> do you know you've got something and you put it in the corner and then you don't look at it again, do you? Well, anyway, I've got that there. It's been knocking around for ages in the way, do you know what I mean? But too good to throw away trips. <coughs> so, because I can see there's a bit of age, you don't see these on the newer motors, so there's a bit of age. So, I was just going to buy a, a new motor a more modern motor with that would fit in those bolts take that along give the bloke the measurements i want a motor to fit that this is a hmm a german aeg 370 watts what horsepower is it does it say hmm anyway that's all it says Made in Germany. I've never really took any notice of the thing. I've never, I bought it in. So I think it gives 35 quid or something for it. You know, you never say no to nothing, do you? First time for me to realize it was a USA thing. I didn't really put any mind to it. Hmm, because that's distracted me because I was going to give you a guide of this corner that we haven't been to in ages because that drill sits in front and everything clacks in and around it well first of all if you get a chance pick them an anvil I mean the damn things are getting very pricey and they're very heavy to move and this one's got a ch back has chopped off it and the thing but they're still very handy if you're warming up metal if you're hitting saves damaging your bench like I say, just the other day, we wanted to swell up the end of that a little bit, didn't we? So we just smacked the end of it on there and it opened it up enough for us to do whatever we wanted to do. So anyway, come on, what's in here? Oh, bullet connections. Hmm, well, why buy a packet of 100 when... Um, why get a packet of a hundred when you can get a packet of a thousand? So I've got plenty of bullet connections. Same with the screws, they must have been a good price or, you know, oh, why have one packet when you can have two packets? Actually, I had three or four, I had quite a few packets of them. Hmm. Oh, nothing, just a out of date, these red. I'm sure a scout crafter would collect these and keep them long enough they'd be collectible. What is it? What's the name on it? Did it say? Yeah. Just about see the name. The old rubber marker lights. Nothing in there. Oh, more bullet connections, of course. Yeah. Why not? Because, of course, you've got to have a male and you've got to have a female, haven't you? So, you've got to have loads of females to go with them. Yeah. God said Adam and Eve. He didn't say Adam and Steve. He said Adam and Eve, male and female. Anyway, one of my favourite sayings. <laughs> That's just full of rubbish in there. Oh, nice shiny lights. Maybe one more. Oh, dead. Maybe might just do a project or something. Uh, again, just... Oh, odd bits, really. Nails and screws, there's the rest of them other screws. A couple of nails. 
couple of nails that come along. I'm not really a nail person, am I? More nails in here. More that came out that tub of mixed. Found a home for them to go. Um, again, nails. Teaching to nails. Oh, now these are always good. These are these, um, well, they're screws. I thought they were the pallet nails because them pallet nails have enough got a grip. Hmm. And again, more nails. So that's all that's in that one. Not a hell of a lot. No wonder I put the drill. So I'm going to put the drill back here in the way and let's see how often we get to these drawers again. Hmm. <laughs> I am tidying, honest, 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 honest. I am tidying up, honest. So I've got a question for you all. I've got a question. Hmm. You know, we've got this, which is got a fair bit of age. We know that's even older. That's got to be 25, could it possibly even be 30 years old, that. And we have, we, we know about them exploding and, you know, and it's sort of under the bench, so you think it's safe, but sometimes they blow themselves out, don't they? Well, I've got plenty of this chain knocking around. So I wasn't sure whether to put a couple of holes here and just drape the chain down so that if it did explode, it wouldn't come out. Um, it wouldn't, uh, you know, make any progress towards you. Um, or do you think I should just chain it in maybe? You know from the bottom to the top and then from the top down here and link the chains together make some sort of come up with some idea to chain this under the den bench do you think that might be a wise thing to do or do you think if you if you keep it under there it'll just pick everything up off the bench and throw everything on the bench at you hmm but i am sort of aware of and concerned about the way these blow up and how they move across the room you know what i mean so you can't stop them blowing up but do you think it's worth half a day or you know get that chain and bolt it in or chain these to the table to stop the, the thing because it's a steel table um to stop it if you know when it, if it does extend to explode, it won't throw itself across the room. Or do you think it'll just throw, it'll just pick up every, the table as well and throw it across the room? What do you think? What do you think? I've got this chain. It's sitting there doing nothing. Should I just, you know, put a bolt through it or even if you have to cut it up to make things fit, put a, like, what should we call it? A safety curtain here. What do you boys think about that? Good plan, bad plan? Or will it just throw everything on the bench out? Well, it won't throw. I'm worried about this coming this way. Because, you know, that's leg breaking territory, isn't it? If you happen to be stood near the damn thing. Hmm. Have any of you boys considered the placement and the age and where they put the air tanks? Hmm. So, before we leave this area, Let's check out this cupboard, which is, ah, just bracket, flat bar, handy flat bar. Gone in there. All right, what's in here? Oh, jam jars, smaller jam jars, smaller tea jars, quite good. And some corner bracketing. Hmm, yeah, never go wrong with a bit of corner bracketing. Here again, a bit of corner bracketing, flat bar. Yeah, always, always worth keeping. They're all right. These wooden ones are okay, but they do get stuck and jammed up in the in the winter and the damp weather. I do keep when I get myself a set of these. Again, I'll uh, replace them with steel ones. But these I think were just bedside cabinets on top of each other. It's all storage, isn't it? It's all storage. More jars in here. Oops. Put some bolts in there. Hmm. You've got to find a home for everything when you see it. Oh yeah, and of course, <laughs> it would be more nuts and bolts in there. 
<laughs> Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> so let's put that back there as a little rubbish hoarding spot. <laughs> At least I've cleaned around it, haven't I? Now you see these fire extinguishers? If you work in an office or a workplace of any sort, keep your eye open for the fire extinguisher man that comes. He might keep the ones and service them and whatever, but he might decide, right, you've got to throw these away. They might not pass any safety system or be well out of date, but sometimes they still work. So, you know, if it's the difference between a fire and not a fire, get them off your friendly, buy them cheap, uh, as long as the gauge says, They've got stuff in them. They're obviously, you don't want to buy empty ones. As long as they've got stuff in them, you've got a chance. They're better than no fire extinguishers. Obviously, one of these would be quite a lot of money. But uh, just pick them up when you can. Because I've got two here. Um, I've got one there. So if you've got enough of them, I've got one down here. If one doesn't work, you can run and grab another one. I've got one in here. So if ever there's a fire, or a fire gets a bit out of hand, um, they haven't cost you a lot of money. You haven't got one in one place where you have to go run off and get it. I have them dotted around, only because I got them. But don't say no. And if you can, scrounge them off your friendly fire service man and bring them home into your garage. Okay, sometimes they're a nuisance and they take up space, but it just might make a difference between burning your shed down and not burning your shed down. But always, always try and have some sort of fire extinguisher on you or nearby you in your workshops. Always, always. So we are making progress. Mm, I know where the pipe bender's going to go and the wood's going to go back in the other garage and the heat is going to go back there. So we are making progress slowly, except we have got this to do. But um, the problem is I'll pick something up and I'll think, ooh, ooh, I was going to do this little job. And I'll just carry on do the little job. But anyway, I am getting there. I promise you, I am getting there. It is getting cleaner and tidier.